What's going on, everybody? DB here. Pat Perry with me. It's the Tour Junkies for the 2020 Honda Classic. It's going to be a great show. We are back in our normal situations. I know Pat's um, grateful for that. We're not in a hotel room. We're not um, buddied up on the on the casting couch like we were last week for the WGC Mexico. Pat's going to be a great show tonight. We've got picks. We've got a, a, a decent field here for the Honda Classic. Uh, this was the start of the hottest run I've had in DFS and gambling uh, last year for 2019. So I'm hoping that juju rubs off. Um, we've got. Uh, we're also going to tell you we got a new segment tonight that we're looking forward to at the very end called "What's Wrong with?" <gasps> and then we're going to talk about a player, and we're going to tell you what's wrong with that player, and we're going to conspiracy theorize some crazy stuff and try to connect some dots. Cheers, Pat. Cheers to you. DB, uh, this is very awkward because my computer's in. A, you, you came to the house after uh, we did our, our our little thing in the for the PGA Tour last week, and you changed everything around. And so I have you in on my right side, and so I have to to look at you. I have to look this way, and <laughs> to see what you're doing. But then the camera is straight in front of me, so it's it's very awkward. It's very weird. Uh, but we're hoping for better sound quality is what we'll now, see. Now, when I left you, the ca okay, so the camera's still in front of you. That's where I left you, but you're having to look a, a different direction. Okay, well, you know what, people? Pat is a, is a creature of habit for sure. Um, we're going to do the best we can. But I definitely think Pat's audio should be better. Um, should be better now as a result. So I'm going to try and change something up, though, mid uh not mid podcast, uh, beginning of podcast. I'm already changing up what you did, and I'm going to do something different. <laughs> if you weren't on the podcast last week, Marcus Marcus Miklovich has already asked about where parlays are to, uh, tonight. So. Oh gosh, <laughs> y'all! If uh, yeah, last last week was interesting. Um, that's an inside joke. If you were watching on YouTube, you got that. If you're not watching on YouTube, I don't know what you're doing with your life. Um, it's been a it's been a good week, Pat. But I'm ready to get into the Honda Classic. Um, I think, real quick before we get into the Honda Classic, very quick announcements. Number one, we need people to tell us, we need people to give us some some ideas for when we lose bets with each other. We're going to start bringing that back, that segment we used to do a couple years ago where we'd, we'd have a disagreement, we'd start making bets against each other on the podcast, just me and Pat, and we want some ideas for some fun stuff. We've already had a, a number of them submitted in the Nut Hut, which have been fantastic, but I want like a full library of, of stuff. So um, we need your ideas. And they need to be things that we will realistically do, okay? Not things that will cost us our marriage or our jobs. Um, they need to be things we will realistically do. A couple good ideas that came out of the Nut Hut last last week were uh, we both get a, we each, you know, one of us, whoever loses, gets a henna tattoo right in the tramp stamp area. And then we have to video and post on social media us showing the wives about that. I thought that was a good one. Uh, there's been a lot of good ones, so send in some ideas. You can DM us on Twitter, Instagram, tweet it, whatever, or you can email us, info at tourjunkies.com, but we need those bet ideas. As soon as we get that library of those, we will start doing more one-on-one -on -one bets. That'll be a lot of fun. Also, there is new merch on the way, for those of you who have asked. Uh, it'll be here in probably probably before Masters Week, so stay tuned for that. Save up your coins. But by the way, we still have plenty of these sweatshirts in there. Pat's wearing a good, good T-shirt right now. All that's up there. You need to go check it out. And if you're a Nut Hut member, you get 20% off of all your purchases for the lifetime of your membership. Uh, speaking of Nut Hut members, if you are a Nut Hut member, submit some cameos. We're doing cameo requests for you once a month. We've had a few submitted already. A couple of them we couldn't do, um, but we're, we're working on it. We're, we're getting the hang of this. Give us a little patience. Uh, finally, the chalk bomb continues to kill. Um, DJ was our chalk bomb last week. He was owned around 18%. He finished T48 in a 72-man field. And then the three chalk bombs before that all missed the cut. So we're on a little bit of a heater. If you've not subscribed, you need to go to tourjunkies.com, scroll down to the bottom right-hand side of the page, and put in your email address right there where it says chalk bomb, and you are in. It's the best piece of free content delivered to your email inbox every Wednesday night, hands down. All right, those are some quick-hitting announcements, Pat. Let's, before we get to the, the course breakdown, what's what's the podcast juice? Mine is this... Uh, this is the last bit of Casamigos that I have left in my home. 
And I just finally did this. I should have done this a long time ago. I got the the ice cube things, the 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 big ball ice cube things, you know. I should have yeah. done that a long time ago. I got those molds for the freezer. I'm really excited about my, my large ice cube tonight. So Yeah, I like yeah, that's good. Um yeah, I'm going with just my typical uh Tito's with uh little I thought I thought little we were lap. doing something special tonight for the podcast juice. Oh, yes. Well, we have a special uh appearance that's gonna be made. I'll give you a hint. Okay, that's all I'm going to tell. I'm, I'm, all the viewers will see. Right no, we there. literally saw nothing. You're going to have to hold that up. To we literally saw absolutely nothing. You look, you're looking at your pee pee. Okay, got it. Okay, so um, I'm going to have a little special something for later on uh, for those that uh, all maybe 17 of you that that read the fantasy golf sommelier. The last time I wrote, I didn't, I wasn't able to write last week with our travels, but the last one I wrote concerned. Uh, it was about um, canned wine, okay? And so uh, because I bashed canned wine, uh, we may or may not have had someone reach out to us and tell us, hey, try this canned wine. And so that's what it's going to be. But so I'll, I'll tell you more about it later on. So later tonight, Pat will be drinking on some canned wine. I'm excited about that. Um, a taste test live right here on the Tour Junkies podcast. All right, Pat, let's talk about PGA National. This is a, this is a tough one. It's a, it's a tough one. We, uh, we need to hear it. It's a bear, you might say. So tell us a little ah, bit about it. I like what you did there. So, hey, let's just let's talk about that first. This is the start of all the nicknames. This is it. We got the bear trap this week. We got the snake pit coming in a few weeks. Of course, Amen Corner at the Masters. So, yeah, this is the nickname. This is the, the, the beginning of a lot of I don't know if you nicknames. put Amen Corner in the same – I don't want to put it in the same breath. Yeah, it does. Trap. That sounds Let's weird. But it is, it is a nickname for three holes, just like all these yeah, other ones. Yeah, yeah, okay. I mean, technically, that's what it is. Anyway, so, yes, this week at the Honda Classic in Palm Beach Gardens, Florida, we are at PGA National. This is the champion's course. It is a par 70 playing 7,140 yards. Uh, we got a full field event this week. Uh, T65 and Ties will make the cut. Bermuda Greens. The rough is typically actually pretty penal out here. Uh, a ton of water hazards. You got water actually in play on 15 of the 18 holes out here. This is really, it's, it is one of the toughest courses they will play all year outside of a outside of a major. Uh, it ranked fifth toughest last year. It was second in 2018. 16 in 2017, probably a, a, a year they had pretty low wins, uh, and then fifth in 2016. You, I mentioned the bear trap. That is holes 15 through 17. They play as one of the most difficult stretches of golf all year on tour. Uh, so, I mean, these guys are going to get that, that stretch, and they are going to have to have their A game. You know, look, one of the things about this course is you just got to avoid the big numbers. You know, you can't get, you can't hit it in the water, get double bogeys, bogeys. I mean, you've just got to be patient. you got to have experience around this course. You can't freak out when you make a mistake. Um, it's just a tough, tough course, and they, there's not a whole lot of opportunity to, just, to score out here. The, the par fives are reachable. you got to take, you know, you got to, you know, score when you get to those par fives, but there are only two out here on this par 70 course. Um and I think you got to take advantage when you get, if you get a decent weather draw, depending on what the wind does. Right now, the wind looks like it's going to be in that 15 to 20 mile per hour range. Uh, it is going to be sunny, but it's going to be a factor this week. So, you know, like I said, this is just a, a, a tough, tough golf course. You got to keep it in the fairway. I think strokes gain approach is important hitting these greens. I looked at Bermuda, Bermuda grass um, putters over the last 100 rounds. We, we, you know, this will be a long stretch of Bermuda here before we get like to the Masters where they'll have bent grass. But um, now that we get to the East Coast, that's what the main surface is going to be. So I'm definitely going to pay attention to that. Um, what else I got here? I mean, don't that's forget. Not don't, for, what? Don't forget. Now you're on the East Coast, like you said. So you got you got early lineup locks. We got you can't oh, yeah. no, no tinkering in the morning like we've been doing. So you're going to be able to. You better you better get your lineups in on Wednesday night. Read the chalk bomb. Get in the Nut Hut chat room and get your lineups locked in before you go night night. Yeah, you gotta you gotta wake up early if you're gonna do any tinkering. Which yeah. is Not in here. So I mean, looking at stats for me, I'm always looking at form and course history here. I do like the experience guys. I think um, the grinders um, that just that just 
can, you know, whatever the course conditions they're going to play well in. Uh, I like bogey avoidance as a stat to look at, at least for guys that you, you know, just that don't seem to get themselves into a ton of trouble and make the big numbers. Driving accuracy for me, I think, is important. Um, that's about it. Greens and regulation. I like that as well. Past champions, you had Keith Mitchell, your boy. You were really high on him leading up to this event. And yeah, I hit him at, hit him at 150 to 1. Yeah. Um, so I like him. Um, JT was minus 8 in 2018. You had Ricky Fowler in 2017, Adam Scott in 2016, and Padre Harrington in 2015 i believe that was his last uh last win on tour i could be wrong but that was that that one that one came out of nowhere so i mean despite the jt ricky scott um kind of cream of the crop winners here uh, obviously keith mitchell came out of nowhere last year uh, but even you know the year like harrington won that was kind of weird uh the weather was insane that week was, that Dan- was it Daniel and burger Burley? yeah and burger lost to him in the playoff and he was a rookie yeah. Um, so you definitely get Luke List lost to JT in the in a, in a playoff. So you definitely can have long shots pop here. I think that it's an advantage to be a bomber. There's def it's, it's not as big of an advantage as I think it was last week at the WGC. But uh, th- there's some some par fours out here. You're gonna have to club down. Um, and obviously there, those guys are hitting irons into those fairways. And then there's definitely some holes that you can take advantage with length as long as you avoid the 15 holes with water, like you mentioned. Um, but I agree, but if you look at, I mean, if you look at the winners, I mean, it's not like they're all. Uh, Mitchell's yeah, a bomber. But, JT's a bomber. Ricky's a bomber. Scott's a bomber. What are you looking at? I don't. I don't. I wouldn't. I mean, Ricky was a bomber then. Mitchell hits it a long way, dude. Have you ever Justin Thomas? Are you, are no, you I, know, right I now? know they all. I'm just. They're just. I mean, we also have have had winners like Russell Henley here and Michael Thompson. I'm looking over the last five years, yeah. That have not, you know, they're not necessarily known as bombers. So, I mean, I don't, I don't know. Okay, so if you want to review the, the, if you want to review year seven through 12 of this event, you can say that. Well, I mean, we could say bombers have an event. We should just go ahead and like make a disclaimer and, and put it, you can put it in the description on the show. Bombers have an advantage every single week. That's true. We talk they, about that. They always I, do. They I always like do. them. I'm not, but I'm not going to just specifically focus on bombers. This neither week. am I. You will see that in my picks tonight. So, uh, also, you may want to check. Uh, your son has entered the YouTube live viewing experience. He says hello, and like a good boy, has refused to cough up any embarrassing information on his father. Um, so, did there you, you go. ask him that or something? It it may or may not have been asked. And then he did not say anything. So, um, there's um, all the folks that are in this YouTube thing. Uh, be respectful of a 11 year old. Actually, because uh, if I, cause, because if you are not, Ma- I will find out, <laughs> and there will be consequences. Actually, Marcus has already told everybody to be on their best behavior. So, I mean, and, and so far everybody's been really good. Marcus so. is, was the one I was. Well, he's about. he's he's in there. He's doing good. He's doing a good job. Um, you know, I think. I think this this is all this is all about wind. This is all about wind conditions. You talk about how windy it gets. Um, definitely looking at the ball strikers, and you're going to miss greens here. You're you're going to miss greens. So I do think getting up and down, being able to scramble on these Bermuda greens is also important. Um, so in terms of stats, it's interesting. You mentioned bogey avoidance. I don't, I don't, I can't remember the last time I looked at it. it might might have been you know, of course, in the summer last year, but it's actually a, a stat I looked at today as well. Bogey avoidance uh, over the I kind of looked over the long term. I wanted to look over the last like hundred rounds, fifty rounds on Fantasy National just to to get an idea of of long term who does a good job avoiding the big number. Um, I think greens and regulation, your stroke gain approach numbers are important. I just mentioned stro- uh, scrambling or stroke gain around the green, and then I looked at the last hundred rounds on Bermuda putting surfaces. Um, so yeah, I think that's pretty. I think that pretty much covers it. We should have some. Uh, we can get into the picks right now, but we should have some inside info, uh, hopefully, or at least a few things. We had some last week, just a, a little, a little narrative last week that we shared in the Nut Hut. Um, and I think people, if you've not joined the Nut Hut, what are you doing? Go join the Nut Hut. Go to tourjunkies.com, create an account on our website, and then pay ten dollars a month or ninety dollars a year to join the Nut Hut, Goldie's Nut Hut. It's the 24-7 chat room 
uh, where me and Pat, Ben Little, the author of The Chalk Bomb, Ash Morrison, by the way, is getting is getting in there for the first time this week. There's a European tour event. So his write-up will be on our site, and then he'll be in the Nut Hut later on that day to talk through some European tour stuff. Uh, but we get in there every almost every day and definitely Wednesday night for a couple hours. It's really been fantastic. What's crazy is, like last week, we actually had a Nut Hut member with some inside info on a particular player that worked out pretty well. In fact, that player turned up finishing like top 15, I think, top 16. Um, and didn't he was like out too well, 6K. But it ended up great. Yeah, it did start out too well. So we had some inside info being shared from a Nut Hut member. There's been all kind of crazy stuff happening. We've had Nut Hut members betting against each other for money. Uh, hopefully, you guys paid up on your bets. We've had. Um, we've had all kind of fun stuff. Relationships are blossoming and blooming every single day in the Nut Hut. It's a lot of fun to watch. The cameo requests that you get one free per month from me or Pat's, uh, they're, they're rolling in. Uh, we've executed a couple, but we need we need some more. Um, and, and then there's people taking advantage of the 20% off discount in the TJ Merch store. So if you're a member, you get that. $10 a month. You might as well give it a try. Just go on our site, sign up, $10, try it for one month. You know what I mean? Like, that, that'll get you through the players. Why it'll not? get you leading up to Masters Week. Just, um, yeah, just give it a shot. If you, I mean, if you hate it, just get out. Don't You don't have to. Yeah, and it's you know, been, I, I was. Just try it out. I was going back and looking at some stuff, man. It's been, we got some sharp folks in there. Um, and there's been some showdown discussions every, you know, every night leading up to the next showdown slate. A lot of showdown talk. Um, some people hitting bets. A ton of people hit Patrick Reed yesterday, uh, last week. Um so the Nut Hut is proving to be uh, to be rather profitable. So for a lot of people, it's well worth the ten dollars a month. So yep, pop up like in there, Pat. Let's get to the picks. We're going to talk. By the way, your son is still in the uh, in the YouTube. Um, we are uh, Harrison. Harrison, you cannot join the Nut Hut. I'm sorry, and I will know when it. If you do, and you create an account, we know this on the back end. So love you, buddy, but you can't create a <clears throat> Nut Hut chat account. Yeah. You're definitely underage for nut hunting. Um, yeah, and we need him to get out before the porn bot <laughs> before the porn bot gets in here. Um, whoa, whoa, buddy, come on now. We now need Emma. Broken a... We need Emma back in here. Um, Josh Josh Kistler says he can't quit her. Uh, all right, let's get to the tournament discussion. Uh, we're yeah, gonna give you. By the way, breaks the rules of what I just said earlier about bringing up stuff in front of my son. So. Okay. Well. Okay. Well, you need to get him off of here. Um. Three GPP plays or tournament plays, one cash play, and a fade in the $9,000 and above range on DraftKings. I'll get it started, Pat. Um, I think this is an interesting week in terms of lineup construction and approach. You've got um, a pretty okay, eh, like a pretty meh kind of field this week. It's not super flashy, um, but it, we've definitely seen uglier, uglier uh, fields this year. I, I don't. I don't love a lot of players in the 6K, which is unusual for me. Usually I'm drawn to some of those guys. I don't love a lot of players in the 6K. Um, and here's what we know about this golf tournament. The the bear trap and the 15 holes in which water is there to come get you will grab some big names. It, it usually does. Um, it will grab some big names and have them trunk slamming come Friday. And yes, it will. I just, yeah, I, I just don't want to... I don't know. I, I'm not going to pay up for Fleetwood or Kepka is what I'm getting at. I think Fleetwood is a, is a solid play if you want to do it. Um, and he may go, you know, severely under-owned as a, because of the price. Um, I don't care. I think value is something that sometimes it doesn't matter what ownership does. I just don't think the value is there. He was 24% owned last week. Um, obviously, he was like 9,200 or something last week for the WGC. That's going to drop being at eleven six, but it, but I, I don't care. I'm just not going to pay up for those two guys when I don't see a ton of value down below. Um, I do like, and I'm going to start with a defending champ here with Ricky Fowler. Um, if I go back and look at uh, kind of his history here, to me, in terms of like true strokes gained, adjusted strokes gained at this golf course, he's third in this field according to Data Golf. Um, he's played here in a ton. Um, plenty of experience here. I think this is a course he's very comfortable on. Obviously, he's a fantastic Bermuda putter. And actually, over the last 100 rounds, he is seventh in bogey avoidance in this field over the last 100 rounds. Uh, so, you know, we haven't seen Ricky since the waste management where he finished T37. Maybe a little disappointing, but 
I, I, I like I like starting off with Fowler here at ten eight, and then I'm going to go to Justin Rose at ninety nine hundred, which I had a little bit of Rosie, um, just his last time out, which I think was the, the genesis where he finished fifty sixth. Wasn't a great finish for Rosie. Maybe uh, you know, um, not not ideal for sure, but. Again, going back to this golf course, he is just under Ricky in terms of adjusted strokes gained at this golf course. He's played here uh, 20 rounds, um, got a lot of experience here, and definitely you know checks the box a, a little bit better, a little more well-rounded across the board than Ricky. Uh, avoids bogeys, great putting splits on Bermuda, great iron player still. 9,900 for, for Rose I think is a good value. Opposite of Tommy Fleetwood, I just think – like think about the, the – the, the minute difference between Rose and Fleetwood, and you're paying almost two thousand dollars more for Tommy. Um, th- to me, that's not worth even a slightly lower ownership number on Tommy. It's not worth it. I'd rather, I'd rather take the value with Rose and make up the ownership uh, in other areas. So uh, I'm going Rosie. Now that's Rose surprises me a little bit for you. Yeah, I, I actually debated Rose, and it, I was going to throw out before I even picked him that. He's not going to check any boxes at all for you as far as his recent play. Um, but I think he does make an interesting – he's an interesting – we may have to talk about this one on, on the DK Live show later on because I just don't know, you know, based off his form and everything else, I mean, he's he's not really showing all that much lately. He's, so. he's top 30 in the field in approach, strokes gained approach, which is okay. Um, but I like the long-term Bermuda splits. I like the long-term he's a bogey avoidance, a guy that just doesn't make a ton of mistakes. And I like the history here. But you know what? Honestly, maybe there's a chance Ro- Rosie goes a little under the radar with the recent form, not being great. He missed a cut, I believe, at the Farmers. Then, then like I said, the 56th. Uh, yeah, he missed a cut at the Farmers and 56th at the Genesis. Maybe he goes under the radar. I, I love that. I-, I love it if he does. Um, well, I mean, and you you killed me for the talking about the history like of the Bombers and stuff. Like, Going back to Henley and when they won, and Michael Thompson, I mean, he hasn't even played since 2015 where he missed a cut. So, yeah. Um, okay. I, I don't know. I mean, see, I it, see you in like, DraftKings after dark. No, I will say this. I kind of wrestled with playing him because I, I think he's like, it's an interesting. Rosa to me is a polarizing guy this week. Like, he's one that I want to play, and I think he's going to be, you're going to get him as low owned as you could probably will ever get him especially if he plays well this week. Um, so I think he's an interesting discussion to, you know, that you could, an interesting discussion could be had about him. This I week just like the, I really like the value and the upside with Rose. And, and I, I just typically, historically, I, I really like that he's not, he's he doesn't make big numbers. Now watch him, he'll freaking triple bogey his fourth hole or something. I, I just love that he, that he, that he just doesn't make big mistakes here. You know what I mean? Yeah. Yeah. Um, I'm, I'm okay. I'm all right. And then finally, for my last tournament play, uh, I'm going to go with Sung JM. Um, now, Sung J was owned about 16% last week. I anticipate that to be about the same um, uh, for, for this event. He was owned 16% last week at the, at the uh, Mexico event. But, I mean, he checks every single box except for the, the stroke scene around the green. But honestly, the dude hits so many greens in regulation and he. He's just he's just peppering freaking fairways and greens that he doesn't he probably doesn't need to practice a whole lot of strokes getting around the green. He's 18th in strokes game putting on Bermuda, um, and I mean you can't argue with how well he's playing. You know, period. I mean I know he missed a cut at the Genesis not too long ago, but I mean, give the guy a break. He had he had missed a lot of cuts. I still like the value of Sung Jay. Um, so for me, I think there's a cop out fade here. By the way, my cash plays Fowler. I actually like going up to Fowler in cash. I normally don't go above that that uh, 9K range, but I like Fowler in cash. Um, the cop-out fate is Brooks. I think Brooks still talking about the knee injury a little bit last or a couple weeks ago. Um, 11-2, you know, I think that's the easy one. But I want to make a case – for Victor Hofland. You know, I knew this was going to happen as soon as he won. As soon as he won Puerto Rico, I'm like, here here it comes. All the all the donks are going to be all up and all, even further up Victor's uh, rear end, just absolutely dying to play him. Um, 
and uh, and 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 his price is going to be up there, and his ownership is going to be all inflated. And I think that you know, it's I, I want to set the record straight here. I like Victor Hovland. I honestly like Victor Hovland. I think he's a good kid. I think he's a good player. However, I, I am not going to. I, I'm not going to. I'm going contrarian with with Hovland here. And so far, it has paid off. We've been going. We've been doing this pretty much in agreement since the fall swing, and it's and it's pretty much paid off. But I feel like Victor Hovland is 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 the is your future Jordan Spieth. I don't that's think what so. I, feel like. I don't. I don't think I feel so. Like that's, yeah. No. I think that's what I it think is. you're wrong. Um, yeah. Here, I dude. By the way, I, I love the kids post round interview when he, when the guy asked him about a, his cold chunk chip shots and he's like, "I yeah, suck at chipping." That's awesome. I love it. That's the weird, that is where he's a little. He's definitely different. Than he he speed, chips. That was pretty. Yeah, he chips as if he's a combat veteran, and on his downswing, someone slams the door really loud, and he just. <laughs> uh, um, I, he is. Much respect to our combat veterans, but like, like he's got PTSD, and then he right at the downswing, he just, um, and that scares me on this golf course. Like, I, I get it; he is a phenomenal driver of the golf ball, phenomenal, great, you know, good iron player. But you are gonna miss greens here, and you have got to be able to save some pars. And he cannot; I mean, he is awful. He is awful. Um, Chipping yeah. and, and putting. He's, he's not a great putter either. Now, he rammed that one in the back of the hole in the 72nd hole in Puerto Rico. Thank God he rammed it because it would have been like six feet by and he'd have had to make that knee knocker to, to make it to a playoff. But I, I'm just – I actually don't think the price is terrible for Hovland. Like, I anticipate him to be a little higher than that. But I, but I also don't think it's a value for Hovland. I'm just I'm just believing that, that, ev- that the ownership is going to be up there. And I will gladly go the other direction. Yeah, I, I'm with you there for sure. I mean, he's 131st in this field over the last 24 rounds in strokes gained around the green. Everything else, though, actually does. does I mean, he's going to check boxes for you, and he's going to do that for his career probably. I mean, the yeah. guy is just a, a you know all around. He's a he's a fantastic player. He's a terrible Bermuda um, putter so far. I mean, so far he's yeah, not proven he anything is. on Bermuda. Um, it, it's the short game sample size. For yeah, that, but. it is totally the short game. So th- that's yeah. that's my fate. All right, what you got? Okay. All right. Well, this is going to be pretty easy because, uh, and I was a little bit surprised here that there was there was so much agreement. But uh, I, I I love Ricky. He's my favorite play up here at ten eight. I like him a lot. So I will be playing a ton of Ricky. Um, and I'm with you on Sung J M. He was my other GPP play, so I like him as well. And look, I mean, this guy, he, the the whole strokes bled grinding thing that we used to talk about a lot on the on the podcast you know guys that would play yeah. tournament after tournament it does not apply to sung jm like no. he has he has blown he he's blown up that stat for us at least him in particular not everybody but he has um and i think this is a good course for him so i do like sung jm as well um i like gary woodland this week and i cannot believe it i cannot believe that i like gary woodland <laughs> but I'm going to play him, and I don't mind the price at 10-3. I mean, we saw him, you know, he kind of snuck up on the leaderboard at the end of the day, or at the end of Sunday on, uh, you know, for the, at the WGC Mexico. Uh, but if you look at his stats, I mean, across the board, he is definitely checking boxes. He's 18th in the field in ball striking. He is, here's one thing that he's doing more than, better than he's done in a long time, I think, is his driving accuracy is good. I mean, he's 36th in the field in fairways gained. And we know he's got the length. You mentioned being a bomber. He's 15th in the field in par 4 scoring, which I do tip, look at on these on par 70 courses. 15th in greens and regulation. 4th in bogey avoidance. So it's, if, if, you're just, if you're looking at the stats, Gary Woodland is checking some boxes here, and I do like him. Um, you know, his history is, is good. It's not great. He did have a T2 back in 2017. He's made his last four cuts here, but nothing really that's jumping out at you. You know, his finishes aren't outside of that T2. They aren't all that great. But I'm just liking Woodland this week. I'm feeling him. I don't, I don't I hate it. That, you know, I, I just – I don't know. When I looked at the, the pricing when it first came out, I, I immediately was like, oh, I'm not playing Woodland. 
But then when I started looking at it more, I think it actually is, uh, it makes sense. And, and so I do like some Gary Woodland there at 10-3. Uh, my cash play is going to be Billy Horschel at 9,200. I like that play. Look, he's got a good history here. He's had two top 10 finishes in the last, um, actually three top 15 finishes in the, his, the last four times he's played here with a T4 and 17 and a T8 in 2016. I like what I saw out of him last week. Uh, on Sunday, he he certainly uh, has been playing well this year. I mean, you look at um, top tens in his last two events. Uh, you know, as far as the stats are concerned, checks a few boxes there. Not necessarily around the green. His scrambling stats aren't great, but he's tenth in driving accuracy, ninth in strokes gain on par fours. I think Billy Horschel is a good play in cash this week. I don't mind him in tournaments, but I think he's probably going to be pretty high owned. Um, can so I tell I you? Know. Can, can I tell you? I think I, I just had this is just a total gut call here. I have a I have a bad feeling about Billy Ho this week. I have a bad feeling. I, I feel like this is a trap week for Billy Ho. I think nine. I, I first saw the ninety two hundred, and I was like, whoa, ninety two hundred. And then I see the form, you know, and I knew the form was good. I'm like, well, okay, form's pretty solid. Okay, I get, you know. Uh, that's that's interesting, but I just I, I feel weird about Billy Ho right now. Like like I, I also think he he could potentially be the chalk bomb on Wednesday night. I, I think he's going to be popular. It I have no I have no statistical backing. I just want I just want that on the record. I, I totally think, get I, why I, you would I play. Can see, I could see Ben making him the chalk bomb. I, I, yeah. I could see you there. But yeah. from everything I'm looking at here on Monday, as I'm as I sit yeah. here, I, 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 I like him as a play. Okay. Um. So I'll go with Billy Horschel there. My fade was actually Hovland. Okay. I had I had Hovland listed as my fade. Fleetwood was like my easy. Just yeah. I, I'm you know whatever. I but, think the top two. Yeah. All right. So a little bit of agreement there. I like it. Um. All right. Let's talk about the AK range. This this range is weird for me. I'm gonna see. I'm gonna I'm gonna mess up some minds. I think with with some of these. Well, first of all, of first of all, I, I really like this range. Um, I, I I'm narrowing my my tournament picks down to two, which is what we're trying to do. But there are there are three others that I like, and potentially this is why I need to be a Nut Hut member. Potentially by Wednesday night, there is something I've discovered, heard, learned, seen in the research, whatever that will flip these around. But as of Monday night, right now recording the show, my two favorite plays in this 8K range are probably no surprise, Daniel Berger, number one, who continues to play very, very well, has a great record here at, at, uh, at, at PGA National, local boy, uh, local to PGA National. Um, and I, I, he just checks all the boxes. There's, not, I'm not, I, there's nothing else to say about Berger. Playing great, checks the boxes, great record here. There he is um, with winning upside. And then... I think for a tournament play, I think one of the, I think as of Monday night, of the five guys that I like in this range, I think one of the lower owned in here may be JT Poston um, at $8,600 on DraftKings. Great putter on Bermuda, typically a really strong scrambler, and just pretty solid across the board in terms of, uh, in terms of ball striking ability is JT Poston. So he's played here twice, 2019 and 2017. 2019 finished 36th, 2017 finished 27th, so uh, not bad there for Postman. And, you know, he's playing okay. He's making cuts. He's not doing anything crazy. But I think we've played a lot of birdie fests here lately, and I think JT in a birdie fest may not be ideal. Um, but I, I like JT here on a course where he can grind it out and, 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 you know, scramble, get up and down, do what he does best with that short game. So I like Postman. Uh, Berger is a, is a lock for me in cash, um, so he's my lock. And then I'm actually going to fade Poulter, who has a good record here, who I, I guess you could claim as a local, which a lot of people are going to claim local narratives this week. Um, but I guess you could claim him as, as a local. Um, but I'm, I'm, I'm actually out on Poulter in terms of, you know, this is first PGA Tour event of 2020. He's been playing, you know, been playing regularly on the European Tour uh, in the fall, winter time, whatever. Uh, but it's his first PGA Tour event. I mean, he's his, we last saw him play in the Saudi event back in January, I think, where he did well, uh, did well in Dubai, missed the cut at the Abu Dhabi, 44th uh, in in the other Dubai event, and then 39th in South Africa. 
uh, at the Ned Bank. So all of his, you know, recent form is all Euro Tour going back to January. I just, I would rather see a little form coming in. And I think in this range, because I do like a number of players in here, I think he's the one for me that I will, uh, I will avoid. So there you go. Okay. I bet you name well, a couple of guys that I also like in this AK range. I bet I don't. <laughs> I have a feeling that I will not, um, because I've got a, I got a, I got one name I haven't mentioned in years, probably. What Charles Swartzel? I'm going to go with. Uh, I'm going to start with Berger. Um, I'll get to that eventually. I'm going to start with Berger, and I agree with you totally. I think that he's a great play here. We've been on him all year, and he's done nothing but come through for us. So I'm totally with you on him as a GPP play. Um, I'm going to I'm going to wait for my second uh, GPP play, and I'm going to go straight to cash, and that's Ben on. I like Ben on at cash. Yeah. I don't. I don't. I just don't mind. I mean, the guy is. I don't mind that. You know, he's. Not a great. He, he's, he he can make you frustrated, but all in all, I mean, at his price and everything, I, I think Ben on is a great play this week in cash. So I, I will. I, will I was actually shocked at how well Ben on has played this event. Like he, he's actually he's got eight recorded rounds here. He, he's he's gained a lot of strokes in those eight rounds. I mean, fifth and thirty six is the finish. But I was actually surprised at how well he's played here. This feels like a course where he would just lose his mind and shoot like a. 90 but no yeah no. but and he's you know he's been I like pretty good lately he had a top 10 at, at the waste management you know t29 last week um so I, I i think ben on as far as just a good solid cash play i do like him uh and he's checking a lot a lot of boxes he's second in scrambling um 25th in strokes gained on par fours and then ninth in the field in bogey avoidance so i like some ben on there and i think he's a good cash play my fate is going to be neiman i'm just not i don't neiman isn't really what, I mean, what about that what about that stinger man remember the stinger from a few weeks back that was a great i mean this stinger is and all this is honda beautiful. national i mean this is pj national is a lot of wind i don't uh, i just i don't i don't mind neiman no I'm gonna he can't him. putt but neither can like byung hun and he can't hit a fairway um you know, he, he does check the box in greens and regulation, I guess, when you're talking about the top half of the field. He's 81st in the field in bogey avoidance. I feel like you're going to get some big numbers out of him. He's the guy that I think you're going to be like, if you roster him, you're going to be so ticked off because you're going to see shot tracker showing ball in the water, ball in the water, ball in the water, <laughs> uh, shot to five feet, make the putt, and he had his triple. I mean, that's like that's what I think is going to happen with <laughs> Neiman. It's quite the like, prediction. He's going to be quite the, most, the prediction. He's going, to, he's going to be the most frustrating shot tracker guy all all week. Okay. All week. Okay. So if there was like strokes gained, you know, okay. piss you off with a shot tracker, it's going to be Neiman. My other one is Charles Schwartzel. Yeah, I knew that was coming. At eighty one hundred, I just think, look. He has not been great this year. If you look at his, his last four events, he's only made one cut, and that was at Pebble Beach where he was fifth. And I'm just I'm just guessing a little bit that he may have found something on a difficult course, and we, we typically see him play well on difficult courses. Um, so I think Charles might have a little something this week for us. And he's finished well last year. He was T16 last year at this, at this event. Uh, you know, as far as the stats are concerned, across the board, they're not really going to jump out at you other than scrambling. Um, but I like him. I, I talked about at the start of the show about guys that are kind of grinders that just sort of don't let anything really bother them, that play well on tough courses and tough conditions, you know, that, that don't require you to ex go extremely low and don't blow up a whole lot. I think I think this is a good spot for him there. I mean, I, it's... It's just, uh, and, and this is out there because he's certainly going to be low owned, but I, I, I like some Charl this week. And so he will be my second GPP play. He he just left uh, PXG, right? I think he just departed ways from PXG. He did. Um, and I think once he's done that, he's flashed a little bit. I can't, um, yeah. I mean, fifth at the AT&T is interesting. I, yeah. I mean, for a tournament play, I, I okay, all right. 
Um, all right, who did you say your fade was? Neiman. Neiman, that's right. Okay. All right, what you got in the 7K? Let's get to that. All right, 7K, and we'll start with uh, at the top there, and I like some Harris English at 7,800. He's a guy that's played extremely well at this event. Uh, he's in good form. He's made seven of eight cu of his eight cuts this year. Uh, you look at the, the history on this. Oh, God. Yes. F this, this computer, this fucking computer. Sorry, I hope you're There we go. <laughs> anyway. We're off um, the rails. Here's, anyway, here's the, here's the explicit rating, folks. 40 <laughs> minutes into the show, there she is. And my son's also watching. Um, <laughs> anyway, Harris English, I do like. You look at his, his, you know, his history on this course. He was T12 last year, T33 and 18, and then T60 in 2017. So he's made his last three cuts. But he's he's been making a, a lot of cuts lately on tour. You know, you look at the stats. If, if and I, we're not model guys, you know, and we, I mean, we talk about we look that. like models, but we don't use models. Well, I don't. I mean, maybe you can talk about. Oh, it, thanks, bud. But I'm not saying you are. You having I'm technical saying, difficults over there? The same yeah, I'm same says. technical difficulties. But Harris English, if you look at across the board, he is sixth in ball striking in this field, seventh par four scoring, third in greens and regulation, second in bogey avoidance. I do like some Harris English at 7,800. So he is going to be one of my tournament plays, and my cash play will be Harris English as well. I also like Maverick McNeely. Yes. At 7,500, a guy we've seen playing extremely well lately. I mean, he was weird on the Corn Ferry Tour last year. Um, you like the Corn Ferry reference, by the way? Well, yeah, well. always up for a Corn Ferry drop. But you look at his, you look at his last three events on tour. He was T27 last week at the Puerto Rican Open. He was T5 at, at, at Pebble Beach. He was top 15 at the Farmers on a very difficult course. So Matt Mc, McNeely has been playing extremely well. I mean. Stat-wise, he checks the box in scrambling, also par four scoring. He's number one in the field in bogey avoidance and also checks the box in greens and regulation. So I like Mav McNeely. I think he is a, a great play this week. And then finally, as a GPP play, I'm going to go with uh, a little Taylor Gooch. Mm. 7,200. The Gooch like is loose. Week. Yeah. Get me, well, get me right in my Gooch. Another guy that's checking a lot of boxes and scrambling, also par four scoring, greens and regulation, 11th and bogey avoidance. You look at his recent results, he's made 10 straight cuts on tour, including a top 10 finish at the Genesis uh, just a few weeks ago. Uh, as far as his course history here, too, actually, that's that's, that's popping some. I mean, he was, uh, he was T, where was it? 20 t20 t20 last year god uh so i just I moved like and like some... sat on one of my nuts you ever do that yeah Ugh. anyway um a little tinge right up in your stomach so i like some taylor gooch speaking of gooch <laughs> uh okay english is english is my cash play at 7800 uh, i just think just he's just so solid in, in this on this course and recently so i do like him in cash my fade is going to be Matthew Wolf. I don't, I don't like him this week as far as he's never played here. He's not checking any boxes. I don't think the form is very good. Um, so I'm not going to play some Matthew Wolf. And it's probably to me, it's probably a pretty easy fade there. I got a bonus play for you. Who that? Bud Colley. Now, why Bud are you giving Colley. bonus plays? Why are you giving bonus plays before it's even my turn? All right, well, Bud Colley's my bonus play. Okay. Well, Bud, anyway, Bud Colley ahead. was one of my freaking picks, so all thank right, you sorry. for that. Sorry. Um, all right, well, Pat's breaking all the rules. He's breaking his own rules about being being gentlemanly with his son watching live on YouTube and dropping F-bombs. Um, he's having technical difficulties. Now he's stealing one of my picks. All right, there's some agreement here. I'm going to try to keep it interesting just for the sake of, of – uh, whatever um my actually my favorite play in this range i'm surprised you didn't say him i was on him last week and he finished 22nd i thought you would be on him this week and that's lee westwood at 79 hundy i love lee westwood here and if you look at true adjusted strokes gained on this golf course over history 
Lee Westwood, number one at PGA National. Loves this place. Um, I, I like Westy here. I like it. So I'm going to go with him. I also had Harris English circled. Um, I also had Bud Colley circled. I also had Taylor Gooch circled. But I will I will mix it up, and I will go with um, – I mean, it's it's kind of crazy, but I think Matthew Naismith, the guy's in wow. really really solid form. I like it. He is a rookie playing this playing this golf course, but he's checking a lot of boxes at seventy two hundred dollars, including putting on Bermuda greens and regulation approach play has been really solid. Uh, but his his game right now is very good. I mean, sixth at the Puerto Rico, eleventh at the Pebble Beach, thirtieth at Farmers, seventeenth at the Amex. 32nd at the Sony. He's an Aiken, South Carolina boy. You know he loves some Bermuda. He's right. He's from right down the street. Loves some Matthew Naismith. So I'm going to go with him at 7,200. North Augusta boy. North Augusta, yeah, sorry. I think uh, it's very, very close. Yeah, he's um, North Augusta. They're, they're, they're right there together. And then, I mean, Valley, I... Midland Valley Golf Club. Midland Valley. I, I, I do like Cawley, but I, I guess I'm going to go with... I'm going to go with Old Man Furick. I'm going to go with Jim Furick here. Who... Oh, wow. Okay. Puts really well in Bermuda. Okay, uh, last hundred rounds. He's pissing you off on Friday. Yeah, he's last hundred he's, rounds. Way, he's missed the last two cuts okay. on the number on the last hole. He is bogeyed. The that last sucks. two cuts. That freaking sucks. Uh, over the last hundred rounds, he is fifth in the field in bogey avoidance. Um, and actually, if you look at the last twenty-four rounds, he is second in the field in greens and regulation and third in strokes gained approach according to Fantasy National. That's pretty, pretty good. Um, so I'm going to go Furyk here. He's got, he's, he's got a good record here. He's cheap. I'm going to go Old Man Furyk. But my cash play is Westwood, and my two fades, I cannot believe that this guy, where is he, is this expensive. I guess because he's coming off a runner-up at AT&T Pro-Am. Kevin Strillman at $7,900. I'm, I'm trying to figure out why Kevin Strillman is $7,900. Like, that one is so obvious that I feel like I have to tell the people, do not do that. That that would be very bad. Detrimental to your lineups is Kevin Strillman. I think Strillman. it's literally strictly because of his second place finish at the AT&T. It's program. like four weeks ago. And then all know, his other I form agree. before that I was would, terrible. I think I only mentioned one one fade in this category, so I'm going to go ahead and tail you on that one. And I'll, I'll fade him. All right. Up. Well, I don't like Kokrak either. Um, Kokrak just just from scaring the hell out of me standpoint, I don't like him on an, on a course where there's lots of water, many bunkers, <laughs> many, yeah. many bunkers. I cannot have coke crack in lineups. He played extremely well here last year. Sure. He finished he ninth, is like, which is fine. He's like the, the, the potential horror story. He finished ninth, but didn't he like, was it Sunday where he just took, like, wasn't he like in the lead going into like, I don't know. I don't. Oh, yeah. I can't, all I remember is pulling for freaking Keith Mitchell with all that I had, and it paid off. So, um, yeah, I, I can't. I don't understand the Strillman play at all. So there you go. Uh, but I like a lot of players here. You know, again, advantage to the Nut Hut is come Wednesday night. We will. Uh, I'm sure some of these names in the 8K range, the 7K range that we're that we're all talking about here, are going to kind of come to light, and some are going to become more clear, and some are going to fade away into the distance. Some are going to be on the, in the chalk bomb email whether. They are the chalk bomb, or they're in the ten facts, or um, they're on DB's big balls betting card, or Ben has taken some head-to-head -head matchups and really analyzed what they mean for DFS purposes, and now we see things more clearly. All that could all that could happen. So more and more reason to join the Nut Hut. Go to torchjunkies.com, join the Nut Hut, um, and then finally let's hit the six K range. Pat, I got two guys that that I I like. The first one I really I like the most is Nick Watney. Uh, I like Watney's record here. Uh, got a good history here. Likes his golf course. Plays well on tough courses as well. Uh, putts well on Bermuda. Chips well on Bermuda. Last 100 rounds, 25th in the field in avoiding bogeys. Last 24 rounds, 9th in greens and regulation, and 28th in strokes gained approach. That is quite strong for Nick Watney at $6,900. So I like him as just a cut maker, guy at the bottom that I feel comfortable with. But and then finally... It doesn't concern you that he's missed his last three... No, he, no. I think his, this course is good for him. I think this this is a different course. We, you know, this is they've gone from playing these birdie fest events to one of the more difficult golf courses 
you know, of the year, which you mentioned. So, um, no, I, I like the Watney play. I and do think that's an important point you make is that, you know, when you get on these difficult courses, and it's it's kind of what I was trying to talk about with Charles Schwartzel, is that, you know, it takes a different type of player sometimes in these events to, to, to not only – to not only win, but play well, and especially when we're talking about these 6K guys, which I don't think any of them are winning. I really don't. No. Um, and it, it, it takes a guy that's got some patience that's not necessarily, you know, your guy that's going to shoot a 61, but he's going to shoot, you know, four rounds in the, you know, 69, 70, 70, 69, 70. Like this, if you get a guy like that in the 6K range, you're you're definitely you know you you're doing well, yeah. Because this is a tough course. Um, I mean Watney's. If you look at Watney, he's played 20 rounds here at this event, and in terms of uh, adjusted strokes gained in the in the entire field, he's top 20 in in, in adjusted strokes gained history here. So I mean he's, he he plays this course well, um, and like I said, it's a different course. Now I'm going to flip that to a guy who doesn't check a lot of boxes, but you know the form is there, um, and that's Tom Hoagie. Uh, Tom, Hoagie's been on quite the run here, so I, I like I like a little Hoagie um, with my with my Watney. I'll take I'll take the main course for the 6K would be Watney with a side of Hoagie. That's what I'm going to do. Side of Hoagie. Yeah, there's a couple names in here that are interesting, but those are those are definitely my 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 two favorites in the 6K range. Right. Probably won't have a lot down here, though. You stole my guy in Hoagie. I was a big. Uh, I'm a big fan of him this week. I think that. Uh... <laughs> God bless America. <laughs> oh, I meant geez. to throw out a disclaimer at the beginning of the podcast. That my allergies are really bad right now, and uh, so <laughs> my voice is probably annoying in general. But it's going to be even more annoying this week. Anyway. Um, Hang on. Oh, okay. That was that was one of those sneezes that like it was right at the tip of your neck, like you were about to sneeze, and then it didn't happen. Okay. Very disappointing. Actually. Anyway, any six K picks for you? You're just gonna tell us about your. <laughs> no, I reactions. said I like Hoagie, and you said he wasn't checking boxes, but he is checking boxes for me. I mean, you look at ball striking; he's 14th in the field. He's second in par four scoring. He is third in bogey avoidance. So. Hoagie yeah, is actually you're looking short term bogey avoidance. I'm looking long term, but obviously his short term has definitely turned around. He's, he seems like he's he's figured something he's out or learned well something. Lately, so, yeah, so he is I playing well. Like him. I, yeah. I think he and, is and he a, does check the box for me in, in approach play, recent approach play. So I mean, you, you're right. Like, there's something to it. Hey, I wanted to point this out. I don't know if you saw this on Twitter. A lot of people follow Max Homa on Twitter, but Max Homa talked about how. Um, he felt like the, the part of his game that was missing for so long was his chipping and his, his around the green play. And he found a coach that really helped turn that whole thing around. And that's what he's attributing all of his recent success to pay attention to stuff like that. Like sometimes, sometimes guys are just like literally one thing away. And a lot of times they're one coach away or one person, the right person to give them the right swing thought or the right feel to get them to where they need to be to close the door on that one aspect of their game that they've that they haven't had. So like be on the lookout for that. And honestly, the way Hoagie has turned things around, you know, I know Scott Hamilton, we've had on the pod, he's a good dude, he's a coach, a lot of good players. I know Hamilton works with Hoagie. I mean, they may have figured something out and like all of a sudden here he comes. So um, he, he's an interesting number at sixty nine hundred. So just a little tidbit there. Yeah. I, and, I like that as well. In terms of some betting plays, uh, just some numbers that kind of caught my eye. Uh, Daniel Berger uh, started off kind of in terms of the shortest guys at thirty-three to one. Your boy Neiman at fifty-five to one. Poston sixty to one. Westwood is sixty to one, which I think is interesting from a DraftKings value standpoint. Westwood is seventy-nine hundred dollars, um, and then Poston is where's Poston? Poston's eighty-six hundred. You know, sorry, Westwood's seventy-eight, so eight hundred dollars more expensive is JT Poston, but my bookie has the odds the same at sixty to one. And then Jim Furyk and our boy Bud Colley is ninety to one. Both are ninety to one, and Watney is one hundred and forty to one. So a couple of guys that I'm 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 just starting a little early feelers out that may or may not appear on DB's Big Balls betting card Wednesday night in the chalk bomb. 
I feel Ooh. like the chalk bomb this week is going to just be absolute fire. This I is mean, a week. That, it has been. This is. Well, I mean, it's been fire every week, but this is just a week that a lot can change as we get close to Wednesday, especially when we get with weather and everything else. Um, so I'm looking forward to that email. I love um, reading the email. Yeah, I do too. Speaking of that, we need to make a, a very important announcement. If you are playing in the MyBookie Masters contest, you do not want to miss this. Due to circumstances out of our control, we are going to have to cut the MyBookie Masters contest off at the end of this week. So, um, if you don't know about the contest, we are going to give one lucky listener a $500 credit in the Augusta National Pro Shop during Masters Week. If you can't be here, that's okay. Myself, probably, will take your request, your sizes, all that, go to the pro shop, buy it for you, and ship it to you, roughly $500 worth, um, if you win this contest. We were going to ru run it through Masters Week, or up until Masters Week. We have to cut that short. So the Honda Classic will be the very last week that you can possibly enter into this contest. Here's what you got to do to enter. You have to have already signed up for my bookie with a Tour Junkies promo code, or if you haven't, you need to do that now. You go to mybookie.ag, mybookie.ag, use promo code Tour Junkies when you sign up. If you don't, you will not get to enter in the contest. Promo code Tour Junkies. That gets you a deposit bonus, um, and then you have to bet and and win a bet with odds at twenty to one or greater. And a minimum bet of five dollars. That's all you got to do. So you have to uh, you have to open the account. By the way, you have to deposit fifty dollars into the account to open it. If you don't deposit fifty dollars, nobody gets credit for it. We can't do anything for you. So you have to deposit fifty dollars into the account in my bookie once you set it up. Then make however many bets you want. It could be golf. It could be basketball. It could be a parlay. It could be matchup. It, it, whatever. You just have to bet at least five dollars, and you have to get at least twenty to one odds on the number. Um, and then when you do that, you need to send us a screenshot at the end of this week, and you are entered into the drawing, and we will draw live and pick a winner next week. We, we did have a lot of success tailing the Patrick Reed pick last week. So I think before last week, we only had like five, we only had like five entrants into the contest, but I think after last week, we probably have like 11 or 12, which is still pretty good odds. So right now, there are 11 or 12 people who have a chance at winning the $500 Masters contest. I mean, all you got to do is go in there and freaking bet. John Hammond, no, it does not include parlays. <laughs> Good question. Actually, yes, it does. What am I talking about? Yes, it does include parlays. I have it. I have it. Obviously, this week. So last week, you know, we were together, and I was able to see the comments and stuff like that. Has anybody, has John Hammond uh, arrived at all, or is he? <laughs> hey, I got I to gotta tell you, John's been a good sport about it. He's been a good sport. He's uh, he's good. He just said, he'll, he said, I'll see myself out, LOL. <laughs> <laughs> it's been good but that's the my bookie contest and again we couldn't control it but we have to stop it after this week it is what it is um what else pat Dude, by the way last week <laughs> we were kind of hammered um we had a lot of casa amigos or as you began calling it casa amigos uh, yeah, we it was a good basically week. had a full like bottle Casamigos. to ourselves. I like yeah. Casamigos. That's good stuff. <laughs> yeah, it's very good. Um, we were hammered. And if you did not go, actually, it must have worked out because I think last week we had our, our biggest uh, our biggest view count on DraftKings YouTube page for TJ After Dark that we've had in a long time. Um, but we went to TJ After Dark and did our DraftKings show, which if you don't know, Every, usually Tuesday afternoon, DraftKings releases Tour Junkies After Dark on their channel, which is when me and Pat get done with this podcast and go record a 20-minute reaction kind of battle back and forth for DraftKings, and it's hilarious. But last week, we, Pat, I went back and watched it, and I, we had a good week, but there were a few things that were said in there that I did not recall. Uh, one of my favorites was we broke down the Puerto Rico Open, and you said, you liked Chase Seifert. And then you said, yeah, and I'm pretty sure it's Seifert. You know, it's not, it wouldn't be Seifert. That'd be weird. And I was like, yeah. And I'm, and it's, it's Chase. It wouldn't be Cahase or Cahasi. And you were like, yeah. <laughs> I mean, it was the dumbest thing. It was quite entertaining, uh, though. Um, so you, if you're missing out on that show, I don't know what you're doing. And, and I see that you've got your, your, your canned wine, Pat. Are you ready to, 
Before our final segment of the night, it's a new segment that I'm excited about. Do you want to tell us about the canned wine? So, as I mentioned earlier, in the Fantasy Golf Sommelier article, which 17 people read, and they all love it, and they give high reviews to it. It is a very um, good article. It is. A, it really yeah, is. I think it's a great article. And the picks have been good. It, picks have been good. It's yeah. been funny. The picks have been educational. Been best year ever. Best year ever, as far as the picks. But I talked about canned wine because I've been seeing a lot of this 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 stuff lately, and I was like, this it can't be that good. And so, man, can and this is this is a free. This is ad, a free ad. But, yeah. But they gave this to me. They 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 said they want to try to. They want to try to, you know, make up the, or, you know, I guess. Change your mind. Change my mind on what this is. So they sent me four cans of wine, one being this white. Shout out, I'm man, can. The, I'm going to have the rosé on uh, on the DK Live show. So okay. you really need to check in for that because I'm probably going to be way more hammered. Um, <laughs> so I'm going to try this. This is the man can white. Okay. Hmm. There you go. That sounds refreshing already. You now it's you, you've you've had it refrigerated, correct? Hold on, don't take a sip. I've had it refrigerated. It is it, been sitting beside me for an hour now, but okay. Hmm. Okay. What's it smell like? Hmm. Mm. That's a good idea. Let me let me do it this way. Let me sniff it. Like like the small yay that you are. This is, makes for okay. great audio, by the way. Mm -hmm. Okay. And my allergies are bad. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, we know. Okay, so it smells like a canned... <laughs> it's, it's actually... <sighs> That's embarrassing. It's not terrible. I mean, it's alcohol. Like you, you hadn't, you never really had a history of turning down alcohol. <laughs> but it's interesting uh, drinking wine out of the can. That's where it really. That's that's where the problem lies. Is drinking wine out of a can. And I just yeah. can't see how that's some. Now, if you took said wine and poured it into a glass, then it could be a lot different. But right now, you, yeah. Why are you looking down? Oh, because you're down. I'm looking at you <laughs> and this okay, gotcha. um, camera that you, you placed way up high. <laughs> As I'm looking at the camera, here's the one. Mm. Okay. All right, um, so a bunch of people want to know if you will uh, if you will shotgun the, the one of those at the TJ After Dark show. Maybe in the TJ after TJ after dark show. Oh, this is gonna right. be a good show. I think. Okay. Um, all right. Let's let's move on to our final segment of the night, Pat. While you while you drink that white wine there, um, we've got a brand new segment tonight. One that uh, that we've been waiting to use, but we've just been waiting for the timing to be right. I'm excited about it. Um, before we do that, remember send us in your ideas for bets that we lose. What we need to do. Email us, DM us, send us those ideas, and remember to sign up for the Nut Hut and the Chalk Bomb. Pat, let's get on with the new segment. It is called What's Wrong with Blank Tonight? It is What's Wrong with Who, Pat? DJ Dustin Johnson. What is wrong with Dustin Johnson? We are going to talk about. What's going on with DJ? He was the chalk bomb last week. Got to be honest, felt a little scary to make him the chalk bomb because you know what? He is DJ. But what did he do? He went out and finished T48 like a donk. So um, we're here to talk about what's wrong with DJ. And we're going to, I think we need to preface this, first of all. Things said or pontificated, theorized in this segment are in jest and not meant for slander or defamation of character or libel or any of, I don't can't remember the distinctions between all of those. Um, they are not meant for any of that, and a lot of this stuff that is said is merely speculation. We have no evidence to back it up. However, we are sprinkling in a little factual evidence, 
as to that there's clearly something wrong with DJ's golf game. The speculative part will come as to why there's something wrong with DJ's golf game. So, Pat, I will let you start. Uh, you begin with your theory and uh, your your reasoning for why what could be possibly wrong with Dustin Johnson. Well, okay. I'm excited about this, and I'm going to start with the fact that something is wrong with Dustin's Johnson. <laughs> I think nice. I can't wait. I can't wait. I, I don't <laughs> know if there's some sort of disease or Yikes. it's not it's not working correctly or <laughs> you know there I don't know. Like he's not he's not satisfying uh, Paulina, but if you look <laughs> at the stats and I'm I'm going to go let's go look at the stats. Okay. He I mean, is, John Tillery talked about strokes game home home life. You know, if the home okay, life well, isn't there, I'm, I'm going to get to strokes game home life. But I'm just okay. talking about the stats and his Johnson. <laughs> okay, so a lot of times, if you got it, if you got a decent sized Johnson, um, you're going to be hitting the ball a, a long way. Okay? Yeah, you know from but, experience, huh? Yeah, I don't, I don't have that, but he's not, <laughs> and it's like statistically, he is. I think thirty third, thirty fourth on tour this year in driving distance, where he's what? been topped. Yeah, where he's been topped. I didn't even see that. Or maybe it's strokes gained off the tee. Either way, driving distance, strokes gained off that. the tee will go whatever. But he is. There's a huge difference there. So something's wrong in that in that area. And there's some problems there, and I feel like he needs to. I don't know how he's going to, uh, you know, figure that out, but it's it's a problem. Um, so DJ is he's he's lacking in a lot of ways, but off a tee is one of them, and he's actually he's actually driving it more accurate this year than he has over the last five or six years. So he's something's changing with his body. It's changing with his body. He's more accurate. He's he's losing distance, things like that. So my theory behind that is, is that Paulina is getting in his head, okay? And she's, like, telling him, you know, DJ, <laughs> it's not all about how, it's not all about how big you are. It's just, it's about, it's like, it's like the fluid, it's, it's, it's the motion. It's the motion in the ocean. <laughs> and he's lost his edge. Because it used to be that, like, he just wanted to hit the ball a long way. And oh, yeah, yeah, yeah. So she's, so you're saying, like, she's like, hey, DJ, length is not all that important. And he's just, just smart enough to not shit his pants. And so she's trying to make him feel better about his cock size. But what really he thinks she's saying is, you don't need to be that long on the golf course, so maybe subconsciously he's slowing down his swing speed. Yeah, because he's been, he's never. He, I, he I actually could totally see that. Hey, check the stats. He's literally hitting the ball not as far as he has over the last five years. <laughs> he was like fourth in strokes gained off. How the could that happen? He's got all the newest technology from TaylorMade. Yeah, he mean? was like fourth in strokes gained off the tee last year, whereas he's like thirty fourth or something this year. Check, you wow. can fact check me, but somewhere around there. And then, no, no we're not also, doing any fact checking on this segment. This is not about fact. And checking. he's also more accurate than he's ever been. But that's the problem. Who wants accuracy? Who the f who wants accuracy? <laughs> Screw that. Um, another thing is, like you mentioned, strokes gained home life. Yeah, nothing that's a big. Crazy that's a real thing. Nothing, nothing crazy is going on with his life. Like if you go to his Instagram page or his Twitter page. It's all like Adidas ads and whatever else. And like, there was one post on Instagram where he's with Paulina and he's dressed like there was. A, it's like the basketball movie and that like that's kind of edgy. But like, nothing's really that edgy. Like he's not posting videos of him and Paulina dancing to some song on his boat. Like he yeah, where are those where, videos? Like, like where are those videos where he was dancing and they were in sync? <laughs> they were in sync on their their songs. You know, you remember that video that I'm talking about? Like a hundred percent. And they do the whole like routine and everything. None of that's happening. Everything's way too normal in his life. Way too normal. 
I, I agree. Crazy shit that happened. Dude, that makes, a, that makes a lot of sense. I honestly did not think about that. But I think DJ works best in a little chaos. You know what I mean? Like, he needs a scandal. He needs some. He needs. He needs something going on. Um, I think that's. And there's none of that. There's none of that. Like, have you heard JT's not in the news? I mean, JT. DJ's not in the news. Like, yeah. Nothing. It's just all normal. It's boring shit. He is. He is so boring right now that it's affecting his golf game, and it's a problem. And that's where I think that uh, he needs things need to change it up. We need to. We need to get him. He needs to screw something up. Like we need like him getting <laughs> getting caught with hookers and cocaine. <laughs> hookers and blow, man. That's can we get hookers and blow DJ back? I mean, that's really what we need. Um, anyway, your turn. He may, he may have he may have uh, Pironi's disease, Pat, which is a uh, is also called penile fibrosis. It's fibrous scar tissue inside your PP that causes curved and painful erections. It can be caused by repeated penile injury, typically during sex or physical activity. Now, may I ask the jury this? Does one think the DJ has had a lot of sex? Yes or no? Yes. Does one think DJ has had a lot of sexual activity, or physical activity? Excuse me. Yes or no? I would say yes. Could he be a candidate for Pironi's disease? A hundred percent he could. Um, I- I would say if I were him and he's just hearing about this, I would be tested immediately for this. A hundred percent. I mean, sometimes they can have uh, it, it can bend significantly, as what I'm reading here, along with pain. Wait, what and can bend? Your penis. Right. It, it can, yeah. There's a lot of things. Yeah. Um, there's definitely medical treatments that could happen. Um, we don't want to. We don't. We don't want that. We don't. We don't want to see DJ go down. But we also, you know, we. We want to we want to get our DJ back. So I, that totally makes a lot of sense with me, um, Pat. And I you actually did way better with that than I anticipated. So that's a good theory. My theory is a little it's out there. It, it's um, I don't know. Now that I think about it, yours may be more believable than mine, but not but maybe not by much. Um, let me let me pull this up here real quick. Uh, okay, so. I want to start with the timeline first because I, I I need people to understand just how bad DJ is playing. Now Pat highlighted his driving distance problem, uh, which you may have caught that amongst his uh, his penile fibrosis issues. But uh, Pat highlighted the, uh, the driving distance issue. But I just want to talk about overall. Um, I looked at strokes gained data, the raw strokes gained T to green data. Okay, <clears> T <throat> to green. Your 2020 Dustin Johnson T to green numbers so far, these are a few of the names that are beating him in strokes gained T to green in 2020 years after our Lord. Brian Stewart. <laughs> Ryan Armour. Rob Oppenheim. Cameron Percy. Not Scott Piercy, but Cameron Percy. And Joel Damon. Those are just a handful of names that are actively beating Dustin Johnson in the year 2020 in strokes gained T to green. Currently, well, first off, though, I mean Joel Damon's a stud. So he, he, I threw Joel I mean, in there for I threw Joel in there for fun. Ones. He he's I threw Joel in there for fun. Uh, now now currently, he's sitting at 51st on the on the tour in strokes gained T to green in 2020. Now, let's not get it twisted. DJ is still DJ, right? So, like, he's still going to be in tournaments, but he's, he's just not himself. He's currently at 51st. In 2019, he was 10th. He finished the year in 10th. Now, you might say, hey, that's not bad. Uh, but that was actually his worst year in the last four, where he finished 1st in 18, 1st in 17, 3rd in 16, and then in 2015 and 2014, he finished 10th both years. In 2013, his worst year, he finished 20th. So he is currently on pace to blow his worst year, no pun intended, out of the water in terms of strokes gained T to green. In other words, there is something wrong with his stroke T to green. Um, here's another. I mentioned th- stroke earlier. Yeah, you did mention that. Um, here's another thing. In early June, 
of 2019, DJ fired Claude Harmon, his longtime, one of his longtime coaches. He fired Claude Harmon. Now, Claude Harmon may or may not be a great person or a great swing coach. In fact, he may or may not be just riding on the coattails of his daddy. However, nonetheless, DJ decided in the middle of the season, I want to make that change. Why? I think that harkens back to the fact that, again, DJ is just smart enough to not shit himself. Uh, the, then shortly after that, in early June, was something called the U.S. Open, Pat. Have you ever heard of the U.S. Open? Yes. Do, you, do you know what day typically also falls on the fourth and final round, the Sunday round, of the U.S. Open? Typically, it is Father's Day. That is correct. It is Father's Day. Well, did you know that the fourth round of this past year's U.S. Open in 2019, which is also Father's Day, was really where the the shit started hitting the fan for DJ. Uh, he sucked that round, and that sparked that sparked a downward spiral of performance the last half of 2019 and so far in 2020. In his last 40 rounds, starting with that day. He has lost strokes, lost strokes total in 16 of those 40 rounds. 16. 16. That is on pace for his worst season since 2013. Now, this is where it gets a little weird, and I need you to follow me. I need you to stay with me here. Something happened on June 10th, the Monday before the U.S. Open, between the firing of his swing coach and before the fourth and final round, which is also Father's Day, of the U.S. Open. Now, where is DJ from, Pat? Do you remember where DJ is from? He is from South Carolina. Correct. He is from South Carolina. Not many people from South Carolina, not many people willing to admit they're from South Carolina, DJ being one of them. Went to school at Coastal Carolina, known as a party school. Uh, on June 10th, a young lady named Megan Holman, 25 years old. Guess where she's from, Pat? South Carolina. She's also from South Carolina. Uh, she was minding her own business until she got lit enough to ride a Power Wheels Jeep down a regular ass road while intoxicated and was then pulled over by the police. Now, you may think, these are unrelated stories. However, being from South Carolina, like DJ, being a young lady, 25 years old, kind of up DJ's alley, I would imagine, um, you might want to know what happened. Well, here's my theory. I believe that while DJ was on a visit home, he may have, he may have, uh, he may have knocked up, said Megan Holman. Um, and on the visit home, that happened. And then she found out on June 10th that she was pregnant. Uh, with DJ's baby, and uh, what what would any self-respecting South Carolina uh, drug impaired drug user do? She would get this herself is very, hammered. Is this breaking news, or she or you're just potentially she would get herself hammered, and then uh, yeah, and then on uh, on on Saturday night, um, she thought to herself, "I have to tell DJ what happened." Uh, she waited until Sunday morning, and she gave DJ the call that no no self-respecting millionaire um, wants to hear on the Sunday morning before your tea time at the U.S. Open on Father's Day, and that is, uh, DJ, congratulations, happy Father's Day. It's Megan here. You may have seen me in the news uh, riding my, my power wheels down the road, um, but I, I need to tell you that uh, I'm pregnant and the baby is yours. Happy Father's Day, click. And then DJ has to go play a full round of golf. Now, now other things that we know about, about Megan – uh, her, her Twitter handle is at M Holman, H O L M A N 93. Um, and she follows the following three accounts. Pat, are you ready for this? At Stoners Doing Things, at Weed Wizards, and at Weed Tweets. Apparently, Megan enjoys the recreational Amerijuanas and um, taking joy rides in a toddler's power wheels. Which to me sounds right up the alley of potentially, you know, 
just the kind of girl that, that maybe DJ in, in his South Carolina hustling days may get down with. So I'm wow, just saying is, it's a potential theory. The direction we were gonna go. I'm just saying it's a potential theory. That's all I got. <laughs> oh, <clears throat> anyway. That was good. None of that was true. Just so everybody knows, I made all of that up. Completely made up. Except, that, no, the Megan Holman thing actually happened. That did happen. She she is real. And she did get pulled over intoxicated in the middle of the day riding a Power Wheels scooter. Power Wheels Jeep. How fast do those go? Like a mile an hour? I think a little faster. So there you go. That's our uh, that's our what's wrong with DJ. It could be some of those things. It could be, you know, penile fibrosis, or it could be the baby daddy of Megan Holman got to him on uh, which actually means baby should be due any day now if that's if that's real. I think, uh, yeah, I think baby should be due any day. Now. Congrats, DJ. <laughs> Good job, buddy. Maybe a little nappy factor is all he needs to get it back going. There you go. Nappy factor. Next event he's in. We're going with him. All right, I can see Pat hitting the wall real hard here. It's time to uh, call it a night and go ahead and do our DraftKings After Dark show. Can't wait, buddy. Hope everybody has a great week. May your screens be green. Thanks for joining on YouTube. You guys are the best. See ya. Oh. Oh. Oh, <laughs> 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 <laughs>